So bless you and bless your heart. This time of the year we do first of the first fruits. I need to mention that. And I've got a tablet, a magnet um, that goes on the icebox, large magnet I've shown to the church. And for all those who are going to do that first of the first fruits, I won't put that in your hand. Some folks have asked me how much does it, it cost? Well, I want to put it in everybody's hand without cost that, do, that will do what they should do, which is to give that first of the first fruits. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Jesus. That means you give God the first that comes into your hand in the new year in terms of uh, your first paycheck, in terms of your first dividends, your first dividends from stock, the first amount of uh, representing the first week of, of rent if you happen to be a landlord. Amen. Uh, on down the line, whatever is first in any category. And the Bible tells us that if we will uh, put God first, he will add all these other things unto us. Uh, give God the first fruits of your substance. And God promises that your, uh, your wine uh, bonds will not be empty. Amen. In other words, God will bless the work of your hand. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. And first fruits means that they're the first of the first fruits, there are other first fruits. And God is saying, when you give the first of the first fruit, there are many pro uh, uh, promises, excuse me, many promises that go along with that. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Like giving you, assigning an angel to you and making sure that your, your, your land produces and that you're not barren as well. And uh, in other words, that you remain productive. Right. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And he'll take sickness from the midst of thee. That's what I really like. Yeah. Hallelujah. Keep that sickness off me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, this is not something you're doing uh, as a matter of law, because I can hear some of these preachers now, these le they're legalistic preachers, even though they claim that they're preachers of grace. But I can hear some of them saying, oh, that's law. We don't have to do that no more. No, you don't have to do anything anymore. Uh, as far as law is concerned, but there are some things that you do out of faith. I've had preachers to fight me about tithing. And uh, I mean, really fight about tithing. I said, tithing is not a matter of law anymore. Tithing is about faith. God says, test me, try me, prove me. It's a faith action. You don't have to tithe, but don't expect the benefits of tithing without tithing. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Thank you, Jesus. All righty, we want to get started here. I want to encourage you to go to our webpage, apostlerod.org, and be supportive. It uh, costs, of course. Anytime you do any production, you got to pay for many other things. And thank God for those who volunteer in the, their efforts now. And we want to broaden this message. And if you are being helped by it. I want, to, I want your support. I want your support, prayers, and finances. Mm -hmm. If you are being helped by this, I want you to share the message with others. Yeah. Amen. Freely you have received, Jesus said. Mm -hmm. Freely give. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so we are freely, freely presenting this message and thank God for the social medium yeah. that allows us to do so. I want to talk to you today on the shadow of a serpent, apostlerod.org. Let me say that again for the webpage, apostlerod.org. You'll get phone number, address, and all of that good stuff. I want to talk to you from the subject, on the shadow of a serpent. On the shadow of a serpent. John three fourteen, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. The shadow of a serpent. Hallelujah. Now, it's obvious, I hope, that I'm not talking about the kind of shadow that we cast from our bodies when the sun is right and you see this dark image that used to be uh, a soap opera type of scary show that came on that was called the shadows <laughs> dark shadows thank you amen i'm not talking about that kind of shadow 
Amen. The type of shadow that I'm talking about has to do with the casting of an image that represents the substance, and that substance, of course, is Christ. Substance, and a mentor of mine used to do this and hold up his hand and say, substance. And then he'd lower his hand and say, shadow. Amen. The shadow is an image that points to the substance, the real thing. Amen. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Jesus. And the Bible is full of shadows and what some call types that represent Christ and represent the character and nature of God. Amen. Everything in the Bible has a metaphorical nature to it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Even Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is prodding me to say this now. Even Jesus is metaphorical in nature in the sense that in order to understand God, we have to look at Jesus. Yes. Isn't that wonderful what the Holy Spirit just dropped? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If you've seen me, he said, you have seen the Father. Thank you, Jesus. We don't have a good understanding of the Father except we look at Jesus. And so amazingly, a serpent in the wilderness becomes a shadow of Christ our Lord and ourselves. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So there are types and shadows in the Bible and people who represent Christ. David is a type of Christ. Uh, Moses is a type of Christ. Uh, 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 Jesus uh, 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 speaks about how Moses and, uh, uh, talked about uh, a, 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 a prophet likened unto himself. Hallelujah. That was to come and that they would fear and that they would reverence or respect. Thank you, Jesus. So um, uh, Joseph, a type of Christ, the, the, the Joseph of the Old Testament, um, who was sold into bondage, a type, a representation of the substance, the real thing, which is Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, in order for us to understand this more clearly, uh, I want us to turn to Numbers 21 and 4. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to, to the compass, the land of Eden. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. Thank you, Jesus. You know, discouragement can make you do some foolish things. Yeah. Say some foolish things. Hallelujah. One of the greatest weapons that the devil has is discouragement. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, you remember the story, some of you, I heard it when I was young in the ministry, and, and uh, the old preachers would tell it. I heard several of them, so I can't give credit to one. And... Uh, I can't give credit to myself, but they said that, uh, that this uh, preacher went and, and investigated the devil and, uh, and did an interrogative. And while the devil was taking him around and he was sightseeing the devil's workshop, he saw all these tools he had. And it came to one tool that was really worn down and worn out. And the preacher was fascinated at the tool and said, what, what tool is this? Why is this tool so worn out? And Satan said, that is one of my most used tools. It's called discouragement. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And anybody who's been a Christian long enough knows that the devil will sit on your shoulder and speak words of discouragement. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The fifth verse says, and the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore, have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? They're complaining. For there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul loathe this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. 
Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten when he looketh upon it shall live. Mm -hmm. Praise God for his mercy. Yes. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it on a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, Jesus expresses to us and to those of yesteryear that as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, yeah. that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Yes. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Give him the praise and the glory that's due his name. My first point is simply this, that the shadow, the type, if you will, of the serpent made out of brass, hanging on a pole, reminds us that we ought to focus on the character of God rather than on the folk, or f rather than focus on circumstances. Mm -hmm. In other words, focus on circumstances versus focus on the character of God. Thank you, Jesus. Listen to what they say. Put your eyes, put your eyes on the character of God. Right. Hallelujah. And not on your circumstances. Listen to what they said. And Numbers 21 and 4 says, They journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Eden. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. The way was hard. The way was tough. Sometimes the mountains are high and the valleys are low. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And the way is crooked. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So they, 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 they didn't have the food that they wanted. And when you don't have what you need in your mind, it can be very discouraging yeah. while you're waiting for things to show up. Hallelujah. The devil will try to convince you that God doesn't care and God is not interested and yeah. God is distant from you or you've done something that makes God not act on your behalf. The people, in the fifth verse says, speak against God. First mistake. Thank you, Jesus. They speak against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt? Why did you bring us out here? Out of Egypt. Isn't that something? They won't go back to Egypt. Slaves. And so they ask, this doesn't make sense. You brought us out of slavery. In essence, that's what they're saying. You brought us out of bondage mm -hmm. to bring us in the wilderness to die. Mm -hmm. Other records will say that they, they accuse God of folly, of playing with them, of toying with them by bringing them out into the wilderness. In other words, they were accusing God of having imp-like nature. Mm -hmm. God was satanic and in his ways that he could toy and play with their emotions and their feelings, that he got joy out of their hurt. Isn't that something? Thank you, Jesus. For there is no bread. <laughs> Boy, you mess with folks stomach, man. They really get foolish on you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So you, you got people that's full, that's full. Uh, and, 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 and sitting at the table with food all around them. Thank you, Jesus. And they get nervous <laughs> when you start messing with the food. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some folk will take a fork while they're chewing in their mouth, ready to poke you with a fork because you're reaching for something they don't want you to touch. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
people. And then yet when you're hungry or having to eat the same thing like they did over and over again, this was a part of their discouragement. This erupted in their accusation against God. Listen to what they say. For there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul, now they just said there was no bread, but listen to this. And our soul loathed this light bread. <laughs> you know, ain't, ain't enough meat for this bread. <laughs> We've been eating this same bread, and that ain't really doing anything. See, some people eat not for hunger. They just eat, the, the, they just eat for sport. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, tell the truth. That's something eating not do. When I sit down while I'm ready, you know, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. I become very athletic when it comes to eating something. <laughs> I want to eat and enjoy myself. Thank you, Jesus. And some people have made eating a sport. And, but, uh, you know, you can get tired of the same thing. And I think about it at that times when I realized, I said, you know, we don't have much, to, much choices. You know, it's either beef, <laughs> or chicken, or fish. <laughs> beef, what do you, I don't know. You want some beef today? No. <laughs> what about spaghetti? That's another form of beef. <laughs> oh, that's pork. I forgot about pork. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But we shy away from pork with a little fear uh, about pork. But thank you, Jesus. You just get tired sometimes. It's eating the same thing, but we try to come up with different dishes and different ways, and it ends up being the same kind of stuff, ingredients going in the same dishes. Yes. Hallelujah. But they say we, low, we, we hate this light bread now. We're tired of it. Uh, like eating, eat, eating oatmeal every day. <laughs> you know? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But if you keep your eyes on your circumstances, mm -hmm. it'll cause you to lose heart. Mm -hmm. With your eyes on the circumstances, you lose faith. Yeah. When, you, when you measure how big the problem is, thank you, Jesus, or how tall the mountain is and how deep the valley is, it'll drain your faith. Sometimes you start to thinking that even God himself is not going to deal with a certain thing. Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But I've come to tell you that no, thank you, Jesus, rock is too big for God to move. Yes. Hallelujah. No problem in your life. No problem in your life. God can't solve and, and straighten out. There is no rock that that God can't move, no, no mountain that he cannot bring low, and no valley that he cannot exalt. Thank you, Jesus. And there is no crooked way he can't, he can't make straight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And it's no wonder we quote that scripture so often. No weapon, no weapon. It might be a mountain that the devil puts in your way. No weapon. It may be an arrow that flies by day or pestilence. Thank you, Jesus, by night. Hallelujah. We will not have to be fearful of it because no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Thank you, Jesus. And even liars who lift up their voices, every tongue that come against us in judgment, they're going to have to answer. Anybody hearing me today? Thank you, Jesus. Don't lose heart. You may be in a treacherous predicament. You may be in a trial that seems to be bending over your shoulders and, and a burden, hallelujah, that's weighing you down. Thank you, Jesus. And, and trouble that's pulling tears out of your eyes. Um, but our God is able. Yes. Don't complain. Don't complain. Don't grumble. Thank you, Jesus. Don't spend your days and your nights focusing on the circumstances because if you focus on the circumstances, they'll look larger than God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But rather focus on his character. Thank you, Jesus. Remember that God will keep his promises. Remember that God is a faithful God, that he's an omnipotent God with all power in his hands. Yes. 
Thank you, Jesus. He commanded and men stand still. Hallelujah. He speaks and men will lay down and die. He speaks again and they will rise from the dead. Right. Are you listening right. to me? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Our God is a mighty God. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't complain. Focus on his character. Know that in due time, in due season, hallelujah, and according to his wisdom, God will come through for you. Thank you, Jesus. I've seen it too many times. Hallelujah. I'm a living witness. I'm a trophy of God. I've got a testimony that I can tell. Hallelujah. If you wait on him, he'll yes. see you through. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Won't he lift you up? Yes. Won't he take the burdens from off your back? Thank you, Jesus. Won't he set you free? Yes. Hallelujah. Won't he make a way? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I know he will. Hallelujah. I know he will. Thank you, Jesus. Number two, complaining the shadow of the serpent tells us that complaining corrodes conditions. All right. All right. Hallelujah. And that's all complaining do. You know, it's nice that we have this saying that somebody says, how are you? And we says, uh, I'm all right. Ain't no use in complaining. It ain't. It ain't no use in complaining. There's no benefit in complaining. All complaining does is make you miserable and make the people around you miserable. Thank you, Jesus. Some folk, I mean, you're sorry when you ask them, how you doing? Well, I, oh Lord, I ain't got time for all this now. <laughs> you know, you like for them to just say, pray for me, pastor. Pray, pray, pray for me, pre preacher. Thank you, Jesus. Because some folk want you to, when you ask them how are they doing, they want you to take a seat. Sit down, hallelujah, and, and let them tell you their story. <laughs> now, I believe even being a good listener. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. But I don't want folk robbing my time. Anybody hearing me today? Complaining doesn't do you any good. Ain't no use. They're right. The old ancestors, our four parents, they say, ain't no use in complaining. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Because it doesn't benefit you or the person you're complaining to. Thank you, Jesus. All it does is bring you down, make you sad. Yeah. Hallelujah. Make you feel bad. Yeah. Even the Bible tells us to think on the good things, yes. the true things, the virtuous things, the, the pure things, whatever is righteous. Hallelujah. Think good thoughts and we ought to confess good yeah. things. Complaining corrodes the condition yeah. and the people speak against God and Moses. Wherefore have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water. Our soul is tired of this light bread. Mm -hmm. How did the condition corrode? Well, the sixth verse, you know, you can just follow these numbers, boy. 21, 6. 6. Now, I'm doing some stuff that I hadn't planned on doing because I, I, I like flowing when I'm, when I'm preaching. Thank you, Jesus. But 6 is sitting here. And grasp my attention right now, the 21st chapter of Numbers and the 6th verse. And there's some systematic, miraculous side to God's word. Thank you, Jesus. Six is the number of the serpent. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Six, 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 we know that one. Thank you, Jesus. But six is also the number of imperfection. Perfect imperfection. Hallelujah. And notice here what shows up when we get to verse Six. Hallelujah. They're complaining in verse five because they don't recognize the grace of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And in verse six, the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they bit the people and much people of Israel died. Now that tells me, first of all, when you start complaining, what you're doing is soliciting Thank you, Jesus. The spiritual forces of darkness to work out what you've said. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Right, yeah. Anybody listening to me? Yeah. Right. If every morning you're getting up saying, oh, I got arthritis in my hip. 
Thank you, Jesus. I've had this arthritis a long time. I don't know when it's going away. Guess what? That arthritis is going to be seated in your hip. And it's going to stay there just as long as you're confessing that it's there. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, how you doing today, Angela? Well, that other right has done moved in my knee today, baby. <laughs> Fiery serpents. Thank you, Jesus. We don't realize that demons have, have been unleashed Thank you, Jesus. And there is spiritual laws that give them permission to attack us. Right. Thank you, Jesus. And one of those laws have to do with your confession. Yes. Are you listening to me? We've been saying over and over again, and you got to get it. You got to get it. You got to get it in your spirit. You got to get it in your mind. You got to get it in your heart. Yes, and even in your body. Thank you, Jesus. When your body starts talking to you, you got to say, shut up to your body. Thank you, Jesus, because your body's got a voice that will tell you, thank you, Jesus, that it doesn't like such and such and it won't do so and so. Are you hearing me? Thank you, Jesus. Death and life. That's what you got to tell your body. Death and life. Thank you, Jesus, are in the power, the authority of the tongue and they that love it. Thank you, Jesus. You keep like saying it. Some folk like to keep saying, right. love to say negative things. Hallelujah. They feel good. You know, we got this old saying, misery loves company. Right. Hallelujah. So they'll say stuff to try to make you company with their misery. Yeah. Anybody hand me today? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. But death and life are in the authority of the tongue. Yeah. Of your words. Hallelujah. And they that love it shall eat the fruit, the product of what they say. Thank you, Jesus. Be careful what you say. Hallelujah. And, and they were discouraged and they started accusing God. Imagine that. Thank you, Jesus. God, you playing with me. You toying with me. You're just as satanic as the devil is. Bringing me out in the wilderness. Hallelujah. Back in Egypt, we did have something to eat and some water to drink. And we didn't have to eat the same thing every day. Hmm, yeah, we had, we had bitter herbs to be sure. But we're tired of this light bread you're giving us. <laughs> well, there's a sense in which God, and you know, this word sent got to me. It bothered me. I just couldn't see God sending snakes on his people. All right, now. All Thank right. you, Jesus. So I had to look up the Hebrew. It kept nagging me. And I discovered in the Hebrew that this word sent comes from a Hebrew word that also means forsaken. Thank you, Jesus. There is a sense in which God is saying, okay, rather than sending the serpent, he just said, okay, I'm going to take, lift my hand of protection off of you. Wow. You see, when you don't want God to help you, <laughs> you, can't, you, you, you can't force God to help you when you're saying you don't want him to help you. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And complaining is a message to God that you don't want to do things the way he wants it done. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And so God will back off and say, okay, well, I'll let you handle it. Anybody ever been like that? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I had God speak to me directly through an angel. Hallelujah. Because I was trying to do things in my own human strength. Mm -hmm. And the angel spoke to me while I was lying in bed one day and said to, said to another angel, they didn't speak directly to me, let me say this. They, they spoke, hallelujah, in about me, in the third person, he, to another angel. Look at him. He is trying to do things in his own strength, human strength. Hallelujah. And when I heard those words, I said, okay, I understand. Thank you, Jesus. I, I wasn't trusting in God to fight my battle. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I was trying to be successful by my own ingenuity. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And from that moment on, it changed my thinking about, hallelujah, letting God have his way. Yeah, yeah sometimes you got to let loose and let God, as the old saying yeah. goes. Thank you, Jesus. It, it means to leave and to depart. Thank you, Jesus. That same word. It has many, many uh, sides to this word in the Hebrew. It means to push away. Mm -hmm. And I believe God just backed up. 
pushed away, so to speak. Hallelujah. He abandoned them for a while and said, Let, let's, let's see how well things will go. Thank you, Jesus, without me helping you. You don't like the light bread? Some things worse will happen to you if I move out. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to his name. In other words, there's some stuff, hallelujah, that God has kept from you even though you're in your misery. Yeah. Though you're having trouble, though you're having uh, obstacles in your life or hurdles that you're trying to climb over, things could be far worse if God's hand was withdrawn from you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And we see in the story that the serpents came, hallelujah, and they began to bite people. Thank you, Jesus. And when they bit people, the Bible says much people, meaning many of the people died. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The fiery serpents represent our sins coming back to hurt us. Wow. Are you listening to me? Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Sin punishes. Hallelujah. And there is a sinful side, a snakish side, a serpentine side to complaining. Hallelujah rather than being grateful for what the Lord has done for you. The fiery serpents represents our sins coming back to hurt us. Sin will punish you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. You don't have to be punished by God. Your own sin will punish you. Wow. Don't raise your hand, but I'm a living witness. I'll raise my hand. I've had a lot of sins to punish me. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that sin is joy for a season. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. For a season. That means a season will end all that fun and games that you've been playing and it will backfire and like mixing chemical, it'll blow up in your face. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. You may have had a jolly time while you were sinning. Hallelujah. But the piper will come and want to be paid. Thank you, Jesus. The fiery serpents represents our sins coming back to hurt us. Sin punishes. Sin bites like a snake. Sin is not to be toyed with, trifled with, or played with. Sin punishes. It bites like a snake or like snakes, stings like the adler, poisonous like the scorpions, and it destroys like venom. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. And these serpents begin to bite the people. And they started dying and saying, boy, we have messed up today. Thank you, Jesus. And they confess, hallelujah, that they have spoken against the Lord and that they have spoken against, praise God, Moses. <laughs> Number three, confession, hallelujah, catches compassion and clemency. The shadowy serpent, the shadow serpent, or the shadow, I should say, of the serpent, the type that's coming from these serpents and from uh, the serpent that's on the pole, is that confession catches compassion and clemency. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, Numbers 21 and 7 says, therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned. <laughs> For we have spoken against the Lord. There's something beautiful here. Thank you, Jesus. Something wonderful we ought to get. Something that ought to be endearing to your heart and bring laughter to your spirit and, and rejoicing in your soul. Hallelujah. Yeah, we have spoken against the Lord. They're confessing now and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. Yeah. My God, thank God for his man of God. Hallelujah. His mediator. Thank you, Jesus. Here is a type of Jesus sitting on the right hand side of the father pleading our cases. Yeah. Yes, even as a Christian. Come on now. Confession is good for the soul. Yeah. Even as a Christian, I've done things that I ought not have done and things I should have done, I failed to do. Yeah. My God, hallelujah. Thank God for my Moses. Sitting on the right hand side of the father, yes. pleading my case, yes. like in the parable. Yeah, I know he wasn't that productive this year, but let me dig around him another year. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And we got another year. Yes. Let me dig around him another year and pepperize the soil. Hallelujah. And then let him be fruitful rather yes. than cut him down. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Yeah, confession catches the com uh, compassion and clemency uh, the shadowy serpent tells us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And Moses prayed for the people. God heard Moses' prayer. Thank you, Jesus. And he hears Jesus' prayer. Uh, one, salvation begins with the confession of one's sins. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Now, they didn't list all of their sins, but they acknowledge we have spoken. We've sinned. We have sinned. We have sinned. We have sinned. We have sinned. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. So hard for some folk to say we've sinned. Yes. So hard for some people to say I've sinned. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But when those serpents came, and sometimes God allows things to come in our lives, hallelujah, in order to get us to see ourselves. Yeah, Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, many of you would have never come to Christ if he hadn't allowed a fiery serpent to show up. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What oh, sin drove me to my knees? Great God from on high. Oh, I thank God for the devil. Thank you, devil. I give thanks to the devil sometimes. Thank you, devil. Hallelujah for all the mess you took me through. Thank you, Jesus. Because when you took me through that mess, that's when I had to look up to God and yes. found out that my God is able. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Hallelujah. Great God from on high. Thank you, Jesus. Confession catches compassion. Hallelujah. And clemency. Salvation begins with the confession of one's own sins. Hallelujah. All salvations. You see, the word salvation is about being saved. Yeah. Saved from your enemies, like David would talk about. Hallelujah. Being saved from sickness. Being saved from poverty. Being saved, hallelujah, from your troubles, your dilemmas, your darkness, your, your dreary nights. Being saved from any kind of problem or situation or circumstance that comes in your life. Hallelujah. It begins with acknowledging, hallelujah, your sins. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, I have to say on a daily basis, Lord, forgive me. Thank you, Jesus, for my sins. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We make a mistake saying that the, the prayer our father or the disciples prayer where Jesus taught his disciples, he called it the Lord's prayer. That wasn't the Lord's prayer. That was the disciples prayer. Thank you, Jesus. This is the prayer you disciples have to pray. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Salvation begins with the confession of one's own sins, all salvation, healing, and etc. We have sinned, is what they said. And we have sinned is the universal confession. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Or there are particulars that, that, that we ought to uh, identify and say at times in our private prayer closets. Thank you, Jesus. But the universal confession hallelujah, is we have sin. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In other words, all have sin and come short of the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. We have sinned. We have sinned. We have sinned. I don't care who you are. We have sinned. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I said there's something joyful here and wonderful to delight in. Thank you, Jesus. Number two points out to us, that God delights in the omission of guilt. Oh, hallelujah. That, that, ought to, that ought to excite you. Thank you, Jesus. We, we, think, we think we're getting by God, keeping God off of us. When we try to sow fig leaves. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I heard an old Negro song. We're celebrating Martin Luther King's and King in this season. So let me, I, I got some things I'm going to say about him, hopefully, as we go on this course. But, but, but I'm reminded, whenever I think about Martin Luther King, I start thinking about us's. <laughs> I start thinking about our folk parents and slave days and segregation and all of that kind of stuff. But there's an old Negro song that says that, uh, that Adam, my children ask me, what did it mean? Adam is down 
in the bushes uh, collecting leaves. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What is they talking about, Dad? said to me, Daddy. I said, what they're talking about is that Adam had sinned. Yes. And he was trying to cover up his sin. Yes. Hallelujah. God doesn't want you to cover up your sin. He wants you to confess your sin. Yes. And he delights in the fact that you say, I'm sorry, I have sinned. Yes. We have sinned. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And when you confess that you have sinned, God gets excited. Hallelujah. And he's ready to show you compassion and give you clemency. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can't get rid of your sins hiding them. You got to confess them. Great God from on high. Thank you, Jesus. And that's, that's a simple thing to do. And it ought to be easy. Yeah. It's not always easy for some folk. Thank you, Jesus. But I've started loving at times. Loving said, oh, God, I'm sorry. I did thus and so. And when I start to confess and I start feeling good. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. God, God gives me a signal sometimes. Hallelujah that you're forgiven. He, he, he has a way of manifesting his presence and allowing a glow to come on your spirit and your body. Hallelujah. Because everything is all right. Simply because you say you have sinned. I won't call no names, but the other day my, my wife, thank you, Jesus, in her wisdom, uh, needed to know the, the truth with one of the children. And my mother used to do the same at times. Thank you, Jesus. And couldn't find the answer, didn't know who did what. <laughs> and she would say, if you just tell the truth, <laughs> I won't spank you. I won't beat you. Hallelujah. You won't get a spanking. And boy, we speak up quick then. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> Hallelujah. We didn't know what evidence she had. We didn't know whether she knew it was us or not. It just tested. But she was quick. Thank you, Jesus, to give us clemency. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In other words, uh, 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 allow us to forego the chastisement yeah. just for confessing. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And that's the way God is. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you will confess to God, hallelujah, he'll forego the punishment. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, with society, crime is punished with confession. <laughs> you dare not confess in, in society. <laughs> who, who, did you steal? No, it wasn't me. But if you write a confession, if, if you sign a confession, you're going to have a hard time proving that you didn't do it. Are you listening to me? And they're going to punish you. When you confess, that's not the way God is. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Thank you, Jesus. With God, people are freed. That's what you ought to rejoice over. Rejoice over. That's what we ought to get excited about. Hallelujah. With God, people are freed by their confessing. Hallelujah. If you admit to God, we have sinned. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God loves confession. Forgiveness loves confessions. Thank you, Jesus. If we say, that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. And if we confess, if we confess, if we confess, if we confess, if we confess our sins, he, he's faithful. My God, holler, steadfast, unmovable, unchanging, immutable. He is faithful and just. He's righteous. He's holy enough. Hallelujah. He's good enough. He's kind enough. Thank you, Jesus, to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, see, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. Oh, compounding our sin. First, we're lying about not sinning. Then we turn around and say, he's lying on us. We make him a liar and his word is not in us. Rejoice over the faithfulness of God to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Jesus. Revelations 12 and 11, the further argue this thing about confessing. Thank you, Jesus. And they overcame him, that is the devil, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death, unto the death. 
Thank you, Jesus. And they overcame him. <laughs> Lucifer. Thank you, Jesus. Slewfoot. They overcame him, the devil, the wicked one, the prince of darkness. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Blood makes us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Thank God for the blood. Thank you, Jesus. I said, thank God for the blood. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blood that cleanses us from all sin. The blood that makes us righteous and bold enough to come to the throne of grace and receive mercy and help and grace ah, in the time of trouble. I can walk up to God because of the blood and say, Daddy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Blood makes us the righteousness of God. They overcame him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You can draw the bloodline ah, and it'll stop the devil from crossing over. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to his name. Yes. And then testimony. Hallelujah. It's not just testimony that you testify about something that has happened in your life. But this is a testimony, thank you, Jesus, of what you expect to happen, to be sure, and what you want to happen. You say, I'm cleansed by the blood, so it's got to happen. I'm not coming to God saying, look at me, I'm righteous, I did good. Uh, haven't I been good? Like a little child, haven't I been good, Daddy? No, that's not why God will move on your behalf. He moves on your behalf because you come covered by the blood of Jesus, that Jesus has paid and atoned for your sins, and you can come boldly to him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And because of that blood, you can testify that great things will happen in your life. Thank you, Jesus. But including in the testimony about great things that will happen in your life, you can confess to him your sins and be forgiven. Thank you, Jesus. So you can easily read this to say they overcame him. They overcame the devil. He couldn't hold their sins against them because of the blood. And he couldn't hold the, their sins against them because they have confessed, hallelujah, <laughs> their sins before God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Testimony is confession also. Are you listening to me? You're testifying that you were lost in sin. You testified that you have sin. Hallelujah. But even though you have sin, my God, hallelujah, the blood covers you. Yeah, that's my testimony today. I, I don't have to be shamefully standing here and, and, and label a hypocrite for, because I've sinned. Thank you, Jesus. No, I've sinned at times because I've been weak. Hallelujah. Yeah, yes, I have. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. And there's been some hypocritical side to all of us and some hypocritical side to me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But my testimony is the blood of the lamb. Yes. Thank you, Jesus, has set me free. Yes. Hallelujah. Confession uh, delivers. Yeah, they overcame. They overcame. They overcame because of the blood and the testimony. Te yeah, confession delivers. They overcame him. Hallelujah. They beat the devil down. Hallelujah. They put him in his place. Hallelujah. They tied his hands. Oh, they gagged his mouth because of the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Thank you, Jesus. Confession protects. Mm -hmm. it, it protects us from the wrath of God. <laughs> you did something wrong, boy. That's why I say take communion. These folks sit back saying, well, I sinned last night. I better not take communion. You better run to the communion. And say, Lord, we have sinned. Thank you, Jesus. It'll protect you from the wrath of God. Hallelujah. He is faithful to forgive. Confession cleanses. We've already really quoted it in the scriptures. It says that he's faithful and just. Just. I always like to say he's just and that he will not tell us to do something he won't do himself. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When Jesus, when it came time to be baptized, he came and, and was baptized. And John, John backed up. No, I can't baptize you. I, 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 I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie your shoes. You got the Holy Ghost to give to everybody. Hallelujah. I, I, can't, I can't baptize you. And Jesus said, suffer it to be so for me to fulfill all righteousness. 
Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? He'll never tell us to do something he won't do himself. So when he says, forgive your neighbor, hallelujah, and pray for your enemies. Thank you, Jesus. And, and bless those that persecute you. Hallelujah. He did the same. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to his name. Ah, confession. Thank you, Jesus. Cleanses us. Ah, he's faithful to forgive. And when he says, forgive. Thank you, Jesus, that your sins might be forgiven. He does the same. He forgives. Are you listening to me? And lastly, confession cleanses, as I said, uh, from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Isn't it good to know it's all? Yes. And not some? Thank you, Jesus. All, all, all. Some folk are in misery. They've been living lives as Christians, looking back at a sin that was done many years ago and wondering if God has truly forgiven them, if God has really given them another chance. That's, they look at circumstances, they see the problems in their lives and they've been bending their knees before Jehovah and asking Jehovah, deliver me from this thing, set me free from this. And it looks like God has turned them a deaf ear and they start wondering, is it because 10 years ago I stole so and so's husband I was a house wrecker uh, because I broke up somebody's mar marriage I, 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 yeah, I tiptoed through the back door of my best friend's house I wonder if God ever forgave me for it mm -hmm. but he says confession cleanses from all unrighteousness thank you Jesus hallelujah just tell him my God, open your mouth up and say, I did it. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And God says, and I forgive you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hey, hallelujah. Oh, God is not like, man is not like an angel. Hey, he's not like an angel. Ah, he's not like an animal. He is God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And when you say, I've sinned, he says, I've forgiven. Mm, glory to his name. I believe God's more willing to forgive than we are to open our mouths and say, I'm sorry. Thank you, Jesus. What a good God we serve. What a loving father. I got to praise him. Hey, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Looking at me now, listening to me now. You ought to say, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And give glory to the name, the, his name that's due him. Confidence in Christ. Number four, confidence in Christ. I'm almost done. Thank you, Jesus. Confidence in Christ. The shadow of the serpent, of a serpent uh, that hangs upon Thank you, Jesus. The pole that Moses put up, that shadow uh, speaks to us that we ought to have confidence in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. And that confidence in Christ creates cures. Hallelujah. Let me put it that way. Confidence in Christ, that serpent is saying, creates cure. That shadow is saying confidence in Christ creates cures. Hallelujah. Numbers 21 and 8. And the people said unto Moses, make thee a fiery, and the Lord, pardon me, and the Lord said unto Moses, make thee a fiery serpent, a poisonous, venomous serpent, and set it upon a pole. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he look upon it, thank you, Jesus, it shall live. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He shall live. Ah, and when he looketh upon it, it, thank you, Jesus, shall live. Mm, glory to God. Ah, look, Isaiah says, unto me all ye uh, be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. Thank you, Jesus. Just a look. God wants us so much, loves us so much. Uh, thank you, Jesus. If there's anything that God craves, it's craving us. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. He craves us so much. He said, just look at me. Just, just, just look my direction. My God and our Savior. Yeah. Woo! 
Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I, I want it easy as possible. Oh, God, the Holy Ghost has given me an illustration. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Some babies have laid helpless. Eh, thank you, Jesus, on the bed or wherever. Hallelujah. And they cry. Hallelujah. And mother walks by. And then all of a sudden they look. Thank you, Jesus. And the mama can't take the look. Hallelujah. And got to pick that baby up, put it up in his, on her shoulder. Hallelujah. And calm that baby down. Thank you, Jesus. Got to find out what's wrong. Hallelujah. And God is saying, to whoever just looks, <laughs> my God, I'll heal him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to his name. Uh, Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon the pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, mm -hmm. when he beheld the brass serpent, yeah. he lived. Yeah. Number five, the shadow of the serpent was a characterization of the cross of Calvary. Brass metal is the metal of judgment. Now I could go through metals. Let me just say real quick. Gold is divinity. Silver is salvation. Hallelujah. But God takes brass, a brass serpent, to represent his judgment on the cross. Are you listening to me? It characterized, listen, it characterized our serpentine condition of sin. In other words, our snakishness, our snakish nature. Hallelujah. You know, we walk around sometimes like proud peacocks. You know, we wag our tails. Hallelujah. Spread them out at everybody like we're somebody. But the truth of the matter is every one of us got some snake in us. Anybody listening to me? Thank you, Jesus. You may not have it now the way you used to have it, but you had some great snake in you. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. It, it characterized our serpentine condition of sin, of sin. You've had it so much until the wedges of sin, the punishment, the payment for sin is death. The soul that sin, it dies. In other words, the snake in you, God says, is worthy of death. Yeah. Hallelujah. It, it characterizes, thank you, Jesus, the serpentine condition of sin. Hallelujah. Born in sin, shaping in iniquity. You are sin. Sin is what you are apart from Christ. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I think about Martin Luther King celebration. We're in the midst of it. So I just marked down on my paper. Hallelujah. Don't forget to say something about uh, uh, celebrating Martin Luther King. We're in that season right now. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. And when I said uh, earlier, you know, it reminds you of slavery. It reminds you of segregation and what have you. I, I don't know. I, I thank God for Martin Luther King because uh, of what he did to help us and those who worked with him in the civil rights time. Hallelujah. But uh, you, did you know that slavery was still going on even though they, we were marching for civil rights yes. in this country? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. That the South had not fully freed black people yes. as late as the 60s. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Are you hearing me? Yes. Hallelujah. They use all kinds of laws and things to keep people in bondage. Yes. Hallelujah. I heard one woman talk about uh, a white woman confess about how hurt she was that her uncles and, and, and people in her family had had praised her uncles and ancestors about how great businessmen they were that pulled themselves up by their own bootstraps. And when the history was really dug and brought out, they had connived to keep black people in slavery even after the abolishment of slavery. Are you listening to me? And the way that they did it was to juggle books and say that people owed money they didn't owe. They had a law that if you owed money, you could be put into prison. Yeah. Hallelujah. And that you could be put in prison for a certain amount of time and be rented off to a farm. Hallelujah. And the farm would pay the prison. Thank you, Jesus, for having you work their farm. And they let people die. They work people until they died, for an example. Hallelujah. And because they had these laws, they would meet a black person just walking down the street, innocent, didn't know their name. 
didn't know who they were, where they were coming from, and where they're going, and pull a gun out and say, you owe me money. And then haul them off to the sheriff, and the sheriff would put them into prison. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Jesus. That's just one example. And this woman said that her world came crumbling down when she discovered that her uncles were a part of doing this to black people. Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. I'm talking about the snakishness in folk. Yes. Hallelujah. And what they can do to people to manipulate people. Yes. One of the things that bothers me is the white folk in this country who are saying that slavery is over. We ought to forget about it. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And, and that we ought to move on. Yes. And, 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 and yet, uh, discrimination is experienced by every single black person in this country, in every single state, in every single city, in every city, in every single county and rural area. And yet they're talking about that they, there's no more discrimination. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Uh, I wanted to say, <laughs> you know, I, after the pattern of Martin Luther King says he was tired of marching. They said, aren't you tired of marching? She says, yes, I'm tired of marching. I'm, I'm tired of protesting yes. and protesting for rights yes. that I ought to have. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And, and some of these folk are saying, you know, just let, just, just let go, you know, and, 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 and forget about it. Get over it. Well, I'll get over it. I'm going to use the pattern of Martin Luther King. I, I'll get over it when they get over giving us reparations. Yes. I, I'll get over it. I'll get black folk or ought not get over it. Hallelujah. Until they give us the 40 acres and a mule. That's symbolic now. Thank you, Jesus. I ain't really looking for a mule. That's just symbolic. Until they do what they're supposed to do, then, hallelujah, will we get over it. And thank God for people like Martin Luther King. Thank you, Jesus. And that, and that great representative that's still fighting uh, uh, Lewis. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Congressman Lewis that's still fighting. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And recognizing that this country is not living up to its true creed. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, I don't want to bore you and keep you too long. Let me, let me hasten on. It, 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 not only does it characterize our serpentine condition of sin. Thank you, Jesus. And oh, snake is nature. Oh, I'm being reminded to tell you something by the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm. And give you another example of a snake is kind of thing that that was being done to our folk. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. There, there, there was a there was a, a law that they had and they would take misdemeanor laws and make them federal laws so they could send them to prison. And, and, and use their slave labor. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But there was a law, that, the, the law that I spoke about is that when you owed somebody, you, you could be arrested for it. Hallelujah. And this man uh, who uh, juggled the books <laughs> uh, uh, heard about one of his partners being arrested. So in order to try to save himself, he began to confess. I said earlier, if you confess, you get in trouble in this society. But when you confess with God, he forgives. But he confessed, yeah, we did. I juggled the book. This person is innocent. Pop. He, he just exp uh, shared everything, confessed everything. And because he confessed, of course, they wanted to sentence him to jail. But he got a smart lawyer that appealed it and said because... Uh, he confessed to this slavery that he could not be put into prison because slavery has been abolished. Yeah. And the people that he put in jail didn't really owe nobody. Yeah. Therefore, they couldn't use the law of owing yeah. in order to uh, prosecute him or put him into jail. Are you listening to me? Uh, what I'm trying to tell you is that snakes are not just crawling on the ground. Yes. Hallelujah. Uh, or crawling up on a rock on their belly. Hallelujah. They're walking with two arms and two legs and they're talking with a mouth yes. and a briefcase. Thank you, honey. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. They're sitting behind computers. Thank you, Jesus. One of the cards I like, I like. I like cards, don't misunderstand me, debit cards and all of that, but I get disturbed every time I look at one of the cards, I just can't help it. And, and it's, it's called, you know, if I could, I'd change it. I got several cards, got too many cards, you know, you, all of us do. You, you gotta have cards to get a discount going to grocery store. <laughs> 
But one of our cards got on, they're telling you. They're telling you up front what they're doing. Right. It's called MasterCard. Now, MasterCard may be angry with me, but I've got news for you. That's what they're doing. They're saying, you take this MasterCard, we're going to make you a slave. Right. We're going to be your master. Yeah. Are you listening to me? And the Bible confirms it. The Bible says that the, uh, the borrower is slave to the lender. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And they got bold enough, nerve enough to say, MasterCard. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, we, and they'll send you something in the mail saying, yeah, we're looking for slaves. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Characterize our serpentine condition of sin and snickers nature. Somebody on Facebook ought to say amen. Send me some love across that screen. Hallelujah. Y'all got quiet on me. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to his name. Thank you, Jesus. It characterized our Christ. The shadow of the serpent not only characterized our serpentine condition or our snakish nature, it characterized our Christ carrying our depravities. Did you hear me? Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says he was made in the likeness of sinful flesh. I wrestled for a while. I said, God, why didn't you put a lamb up on that pole? Why didn't you instruct Moses to put a lion or some other figure that, that we like to think about when we associate ourselves with Christ? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But God was showing me, hallelujah, what he saw Christ as when he was on the cross. Thank you, Jesus. When he was on the cross, hallelujah, he was bearing our depravities. Thank you, Jesus. On him was laid the iniquity of us all. When he looked at Christ on the cross, he was seeing sin. Thank you, Jesus. And therefore, he couldn't put the lamb there. Hallelujah. He couldn't put the lion there. He had to put the serpent there so that we'd get the message, hallelujah, that all of our sins is equal to being that of serpentine and snakishness. Great God from on high. He was made to be sin. 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 Everything we think about when it comes to snakes and serpents is, all, is about ugliness, grotesqueness, sinful wickedness. Horrendous, horrific, evil, darkness. Thank you, Jesus. And what God was doing was taking all of the evil that we have committed, the darkness that we have, and the wickedness of our hearts, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, and the sin condition that we are, we are sin, we are sin apart from Christ. And he took all of our sinness and put it on him. He was made to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God. On him was laid. On him was laid. On him was laid the iniquity of us all. Thank you, Jesus. Number six, the shadow of the serpent says, see your snakish crimes castigated and crucified on the cross. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Thank you, Jesus. And being found, Philippians says, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. And being found in fashion as a man. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He humbled himself and became obedient to the death, even the death of the cross. Hey, while he was hanging there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God was not playing, not role playing, not acting. Jesus literally became in the sight of God sin for us. Oh, I love him today. Thank you, Jesus. I said I love him today. He became sin for me. Hallelujah. And allowed God to crucify him. Thank you, Jesus. And he was nailed to the cross. Uh, and the ordinances, the laws that were against me were taken out of the way. Thank you, Jesus. Now listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man 
be lifted up. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. He was uh, forecasting his, his death on the cross. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, should not perish, mm -hmm. but have eternal life. Right. The shadow of the serpent answers the question of why <laughs> Jesus was lifted up as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Wow. Hallelujah. Jesus went on to say in the 16th verse, I just read 14th and 15th of John 3. He went on to say in the 16th verse, for God so loved the world. That's what it's all about. All of the preaching, all of the, the, the songs that we're singing and, 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 and all of the services that we're having, the worshiping, hallelujah, the shining of shoes, tying on the tie and, and putting on the wig and, and, and dyeing the hair and all of the good stuff that we do. Hallelujah. It comes down to the fact that we recognize and celebrate <laughs> that God so loved the world. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm here today because he loved me. Yes. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I, I'm not here for, uh, for paycheck. I'm not here, hallelujah, for fame. I'm not here for fortune. I'm not here for popularity. I'm not here for political gain. Hallelujah. I'm here because I want to be another voice that says the Lord is good. That he is great and greatly to be praised. Yes. Hallelujah. His love is so wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. It's a staggering to the imagination. Hallelujah. Oh, what a wonderful God we serve. And for God sent not his son into the world, listen, to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. The condemnation was put upon him. Thank you, Jesus, that we might be saved, ah, healed, delivered, and all that good stuff. Thank you, Jesus. Number seven, the shadow of the serpent. I said I wasn't going to hold you long, so I'm trying to wrap it up here now. The shadow of the serpent says celebrate the compassion. Yeah. Celebrate the compassion of God, no matter how large or small the blessing is or the blessing may be. One of the big mistakes that they made was they said God is in... Is, 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 is this, let me, let me, let me, let me back up here. One, one of the things that they said was that they complained about the bread being too light. It sounds like, you know, man, we've been eating beans every day now. I'm tired of these beans. You know. <laughs> but you know, God is in small things also. Thank you, Jesus. And we got to be grateful for the small things, even though things are not right. Hallelujah. It, it, it's not going to be that way always. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It, 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 the bread may be light now, yeah, but it's going to get heavy down the road. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, they they should have celebrated the exodus out of Egypt, no matter how small the bread was. They, they should have thanked God that they have been freed from slave bondage, no matter how little they had to eat. And the fact that you are saved, hallelujah, ought to make you feel like dancing every now and then. Hey, hallelujah, you may only have a bologna sandwich to take to work say every now and then, but while you're going to work and eating that bologna, you ought to cry hallelujah. Thank God I got something to eat. Thank God I can, I can, no matter what my condition, Paul says, no matter what condition I'm in, I've been persuaded, hallelujah, to be thankful for all things at all times. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, they should have thanked God for freeing them from bondage. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> hallelujah. I, I don't know about anybody here, but I got to thank him. You see, miracles. Miracles are no problem for God. You know, we're talking about small blessings. This, this ain't enough. Hallelujah. I wish we had more. And, uh, when is God really going to bless me? And God's blessing you all the time. Yes, blessing yes, you every day. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God shut my mouth up one day. Yeah. I like telling on myself, confessing. See, then you don't feel bad. You feel bad for me. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But, but there was a time, hallelujah, that I had sinned. And, and, and like, like I talked about earlier, I started looking back saying, oh, Wonder if that God is holding this against me and that, that against me and that. That's why He hadn't answered me. And and I said, God, 
I, I thought you forgave me of that sin. And I heard a voice saying, I did. You're still living. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The fact that you are alive, no matter what your circumstance or your condition is, God is blessing you. Yes. Hallelujah. And you ought to be grateful. <laughs> oh, our old saints, saints the old uh, uh, folk parents and saints, they were grateful. They, they had a prayer that ran all the way through this country. Hallelujah. You could step into any church, anywhere that black folk were in. Hallelujah. And hear some deacon stand up and say, he woke us up early this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, for the blood running warm in my veins. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, hallelujah. Small things, small things. Hallelujah. We got to be grateful for. No, oh, you haven't thanked God for that little car. Why are you yeah. worrying about getting a big one? Yeah. Just maybe because you're not grateful yeah. for the little teeny car. Yeah. You haven't got the limousine you're looking for. Right. Thank you, Jesus. Got to learn to say thank you. Yeah. Hallelujah. And keep happy. Thank you, Jesus. And rejoicing yeah. Yeah, over his goodness. Yeah. Oh, I thank God for the small things in life. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can lose some of those small things and you'll see how big they really are. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. That there are people who are lying in beds of affliction that yes. can't scratch the nose. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Can't turn the body over. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. There are folk whose teeth are rotten in their mouth yes. because they can't lift their hands to brush it up, brush their teeth every day. They got to depend on somebody else. Yes. Something as simple as blowing your nose. Hallelujah. When you get to the point you can't do that, you'll see how big it is. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just smelling. Hallelujah. And, and tasting. And that one woman I saw, she, she couldn't eat uh, and couldn't enjoy food, wasn't eating because she couldn't taste nothing she put in her mouth. That seems to be a small thing. Incident. Have you ever stopped to thank God for the taste buds in your mouth? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Small things. We got to tell God, thank you for bread might be light. Thank God for the light bread. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Miracles are no problem for God. It's a small thing. All miracles. Let me tell you something. All miracles are a small thing to God. They may seem to be big things to you when you need a miracle, but it's a small thing to God. One of the weakest words in the Bible is miracle. Oh, listen to me before you get upset. One of the weakest words in the Bible is the word miracle because it's misleading. It is weak because it's misleading about God. Believe it or not, every word in the Bible has a misleading side about it. That's why you need the Holy Spirit to help you when you're studying the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. And that example of it is the word rock for an example. Mm -hmm. We say Jesus is a rock. First Corinthians says 10 and 4 says, and did all drink, talking about these people in the wilderness, all did drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Yes. Yes. Are you listening to yes. me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, David concluded in his military conquests, gratefully acknowledged the participation of God, and he was always careful. Thank you, Jesus, to speak of God's goodness and mercy, past and present, with future expectations that God's going to bless him again. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sometimes your gratitude should be a gratitude about small things yes. with the expectation that greater things are coming. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yeah, God. Hallelujah. They complain about uh, the, 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 the small light bread, the small things, but miracles are small things to God. Thank you, Jesus. The only reason we use the word miracle is, is because it's something we can't do. Yes. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? No. I've been long telling folk God doesn't perform miracles. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Thank you, Jesus. Now, don't throw rocks at me. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, God's just acting natural. Yes. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Nothing to him to do what needs to be done. Hallelujah. Raising the dead is not a miracle for God. God is just being God. Hallelujah. It's natural. It's the supernatural. And the word super means more natural. Hey, whenever God does what we call a miracle, he's just being more naturally himself. Glory to God. I'm going to thank him for the small things. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, and I'm going to thank him for the big things. I'm going to thank him for his blood. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank him for the small things. The bed I sleep in, the house I'm in, and the roof over my head. Hey, the thermostat to turn up the heat when I get too cold. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to thank him for the big things too. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for, for your blood, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking my feet out of the muck and the miry clay. Can I say it in an old-fashioned way? Thank you, Jesus, for placing my feet on a rock to stay, putting a song in my heart. Hey, giving me a story to tell. Hey, my God, I cried. I've been redeemed. I've been washed. Hallelujah. In the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I'm going to thank him for the big things. Hey, thank him for the Holy Ghost. Thank him, my God, while I was on this earth. Hallelujah. I wasn't these, this disillusioned Christian that, thought that speaking in tongues wasn't of God. I speak in tongues. Thank God for the big things. Hey. Thank God for the miracles in my life. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. I'm trying to quit. That's what I'm doing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I see something else. I might start dancing. Hallelujah. Thank him. I thank him. I thank him. Thank you. You ain't got to send no snake around me. <laughs> no serpent around me to make me say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Goodness behind me. Ah, makes me say thank you. When I'm walking in the valley, God being beside me, thou art with me, makes me say thank you. Hey, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And then before me, he prepares <laughs> a table <laughs> in the presence of my enemies. My God, my God, my God. I said, I got to quit. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. I'm done. Thank you, Jesus. Now a little unbalanced. I just want to say to mm -hmm. those of us who sat in that book through her testimony, we should have been able to see. Sure, it was plain. Yeah, it Ooh, was plain. Where yeah. we are? <laughs> yes, it was plain. Where we are. It yeah. was plain. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> mm. Yeah, it was plain. Let's see. When, when you were standing up there, I heard uh, uh, disability and I heard Social Security when, I, mm -hmm. when you were up there. Before, uh, before. Uh, uh, when this the time Let's see. Um, I hear the word of the Lord saying that there's going to be a new day for you. But confession is a key to you your life. I hear the Lord saying that I know you you are, for a season you need to visit here. Um, there's uh, a word that you can take to restore your life and to help others. That sometimes when our situation looks bad, I, this is what I'm hearing, 
that it's not as bad as other people's situation. Amen. And I hear the Lord saying that you have to put your best foot forward mm -hmm. and command the things that you want right. and command that he gives you the things or provides the things that you need. The Lord says you have things sitting on a shelf that you've asked for that you never ever received them. Mm -hmm. He's given them to you, I hear the Lord saying, and they're sitting on a shelf waiting for you mm -hmm. to confess and to receive those things. The Lord says he's given growth to you and there's going to be an anointing within you, within you. You're